After this I looked. The Lord Jesus Christ stopped speaking. The letter to the seven churches was completed. These seven messages were given to John one right after the other, taking only a matter of minutes. After the Lord Jesus Christ stopped speaking, John looked around. He saw a door open in heaven. This is very clearly a vision, as explained in 1.10. John is still in the Spirit at this time. We will be with John in the Spirit throughout the rest of the book of Revelation. This is the rapture of the church and the end of the church age. The open door leads to heaven and John represents the church. The voice, like a trumpet, commands John to go up to heaven. The rapture will be at the trump of God. Jesus Christ himself told John that he would show him what must take place after this. Everything else in the book of Revelation after this point takes place after the rapture. Since John went with the saints, the first thing we as saints will see after the rapture will be a throne in heaven. The one sitting on the throne is similar to the one sitting on the throne in the vision of Ezekiel. I believe that the vision of Ezekiel is the same throne that John saw, though at different times. Ezekiel looked from under the expanse. John was on top of the crystal sea. The rainbow is God's promise to the entire earth. It is not only a promise to not destroy the entire earth with a flood, but it is the sign of the everlasting covenant. Everything that moves, God has given to us as food. We are not to eat blood, and whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. Genesis 9, 6. The usual conservative interpretation is that the 24 thrones represent both the church and Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles. This is in fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy that many would come and take their place with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 8, 11. Dressed in white means that they are clothed in Christ's righteousness. The crown, Stephanus, on their heads are the rewards for the deeds in this life. The flashes of lightning, rumbling, the peals of thunder coming from the throne show God's power and eminent use of that power. Here, the seven lamps represent the sevenfold Spirit of God, not the churches. The blazing lamps are the power of God's Spirit to judge, purify, cleanse, reveal, illuminate, and test for believers. This is the Bema judgment seat of Christ, the handing out of rewards. I believe that this sea of crystal is what Ezekiel saw as an expanse above him. This is the dividing line, if you will, between heaven and earth. Though heaven can, if they so desire, view the material world, the material world cannot view heaven unless God miraculously opens someone's eyes. The clear sea also represents God's purity and holiness. As in Ezekiel's vision, there are four living creatures. Ezekiel's creatures had wheels covered with eyes. John's creatures are covered with eyes in front and in back. Jesus said about the eye, the eye is the lamp of the body, Matthew 6 22. Ezekiel saw his vision when Judah was judged by the Babylonian captivity. John's vision is the judgment seat of Christ for believers. The eyes represent God seeing and knowing everything about us not only our deeds, but also our motives. The Word of God judges the thoughts and attitudes, King James Version, and tanks of the heart, Hebrews 4.12. Each creature in Ezekiel's vision had four faces, a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. In John's vision, each creature had one face, but there are four different faces, a lion, an ox, a man, and an eagle. Each of the four Gospels have a different emphasis of Christ. Matthew is the son of David, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Mark as the sacrificial servant, the ox of the burnt offering. Luke is the son of man, the man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. John as the son of God, ruler of the air and victorious over the serpent. 
The order of these creatures in Revelation is the same as the order of the Gospels. The lion, the ox, the man, and the eagle. Ezekiel identified the creatures he saw as cherubim in chapter 10. The creatures John sees act like the seraphs of Isaiah's vision in Isaiah chapter 6. Each creature has six wings, as do the seraphs. Their eyes are emphasized to be. They know the thoughts and motives of believers and unbelievers alike. This is our period of examination. As the seraphs in Isaiah's vision, these creatures say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They change the message of the seraphs to finish their phrase with the theme of Revelation, who was and is and is to come. The only way these living creatures can give glory, honor, and thanks is by what they do and what they say. The word atan is almost always translated when. I feel that this should be translated when here. I believe that the laying down of the crowns is a one-time act, not something repeated over and over. Since the living creatures never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, this giving glory, honor, and thanks must be something different. We do not know exactly what John means because he did not write it down. But when we are in heaven and see it ourselves, we will know exactly what giving glory, honor, and thanks means. The one sitting on the throne is God the Father. The emphasis here is that God lives forever and ever. Jesus Christ is the one who is, was, and is to come. The Father lives forever and ever. For us, both phrases mean the same thing. God created the world. The world is temporary, and the world will be judged and brought to an end. Once again, the 24 elders represent both the church and Israel, or all Old Testament believers. Our joy and privilege will be to fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. The idea of worship is both the bodily position of kneeling or lying down and the attitude of submission. The constant emphasis on phrases such as lives forever and ever is that God and heaven are real and eternal. This life is a vapor, a mist, and passing away. The entire purpose of this life is to earn crowns, the Stephanos, that we may lay at the feet of him who lives forever and ever. There we will praise and worship him. He is worthy of our praise by right of creation. Everything exists because of him. This is the foundation of America's established religion, secular humanism. It needs evolution to deny God's right to receive honor and glory and power. It does that by denying that God is the creator. The foundational truth which they deny is that everything exists because of the will of God.